A few days have passed since the conclusion of Starship's third launch. Before the issues were discussed in the space community with a series of titles such as Was Elon Musk's Starship Flight Successful? Why did Starship disappear? How great was Starship's re-entry? In fact, another aspect that makes people equally curious is the post-launch impact that Starship causes around the launch area, especially the Starship seat, the launch pad. So, after months of refurbishment to prepare for the momentous rocket launch, how was the launch pad aftermath? Why did SpaceX allow damage to occur to the launch pad when they aimed to increase rocket turnaround speed? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The third Starship launch was indeed a distinctive and pivotal event for all future plans involving Starship. After undergoing two previous launches, SpaceX garnered numerous necessary lessons for the development of their Starship system. With the third launch, as expected, Starship took another intriguing step forward on its path to success. It achieved all set objectives, successfully opening the cargo door while in orbit, conducting propellant transfer between rocket fuel tanks, and performing the flip maneuver with a super heavy booster to begin its return to Earth. Analysts suggest that these achievements have the potential to revolutionize space transportation and support future missions to return astronauts to the moon. However, will everything go as smoothly as we think? Of course they're not. Starship success is undeniable, but the losses are not unknown for SpaceX. Particularly noteworthy is the condition of the launch pad after the rockets ascend into space. The launch pad is an extremely crucial component supporting the liftoff of Starship into space. It serves as both a support base and a foundation, ensuring the rocket stands upright and maintains a safe distance between its engines and the ground. Besides this functionality, the engineering structure of the launch pad is not a simple design. It combines with the launch tower to form one of the most complex physical bases of Stage Zero. Therefore, ensuring the safety of this component is highly prioritized by SpaceX. Following the third Starship launch, at first glance, there may not be too many abnormalities with the launch pad or the adjacent launch tower. However, upon closer observation of the images beneath the Starship launch pad, we noticed that although SpaceX had added thicker steel panels for protection, the current condition of the launch tower's base has suffered significant erosion due to the heat of the 33 Raptor engines. This has caused the steel panels to become thinner and discolored. Overall, this isn't a major issue for SpaceX, nor is it something that'll cause significant headaches. However, moving up a bit, we notice slightly more pronounced impacts. The Booster Quick Disconnect, or BQD, compared to before the launch, has experienced partial burning, deformation, and slight melting, with the paint layer becoming patchy. It seems to have performed its function well, and SpaceX will likely not spend much time repairing this component. Next, there's the unusual incident involving the ship QD and chopstick after the Starship launch. It appears that the shockwaves from the super-heavy 17 million pounds of thrust continue to cause damage to components along the rocket's ascent path. Evidence of this is the ship QD once again tilting to one side. During the rocket's ascent, we can also observe that it does not ascend entirely straight but leans slightly. Although not as pronounced as in the first and second launches, we still hope that B-11 can allow the Starship to have a straight ascent. The issue is likely to be more related to the chopstick. Considering SpaceX's diligent testing of it before the launch, it seems to be an issue that needs to be thoroughly analyzed and resolved for the next launch. There will certainly be many repairs with the chopstick in the coming future, and there will also be design changes for the second launch tower being constructed at Starbase. The damage is evident, but these are positive developments compared to Starship's first launch. If we recall, the initial launch of Starship resulted in horrific destruction, demolishing the structure beneath the launch pad, sending blocks of sand, concrete, and steel thousands of feet into the sky, and igniting a nearby park. The destruction raised concerns not only for when SpaceX might be able to try another test launch from Texas, but also for the construction of a similar pad at Kennedy Space Center in Launch Pad 39A. And that's an issue that SpaceX must address. The pad adjustment meant adding more than 35,000 cubic feet of steel-reinforced high-strength concrete below it, Musk said, but also the introduction of a massive water-cooled steel flame deflector that's basically two thick plates of steel that are welded together with channels going through it, he said. Combined with various other components, it forms an indispensable water deluge system crucial for safeguarding the launch pad. At its core, the water deluge system acts as a shield against the blistering heat generated during liftoff. 
As the Super Heavy's booster's 33 Raptor engines ignite, temperatures at the launch pad soar to levels capable of compromising not only the structural integrity of nearby facilities, but also the very surface upon which they stand. Here, the deluge system emerges as a formidable buffer, absorbing and dissipating the intense thermal energy, thereby averting potential damage and ensuring the longevity of critical infrastructure. Beyond its role in heat mitigation, the water deluge system assumes a crucial responsibility in the realm of sound suppression. The thunderous roar of rocket engines, particularly those as potent as the Raptor series, possesses the capacity to inflict physical harm on the launch pad and its environment. By releasing torrents of water, the system acts as a barrier, intercepting and dampening the propagation of sound waves. This not only safeguards the structural components of the launch pad, but also curtails the disruptive impact on surrounding ecosystems, shielding wildlife from the detrimental effects of excessive noise pollution. Moreover, the water deluge system represents a paradigm shift in launch pad safety, underscored by notable advancements. After completing the construction, Starship and Super Heavy embarked on their second journey, and the innovation yielded clear results. Following the launch in November, the launch pad remained secure, although there were still some damages, they weren't significant, contributing to shortening the turnaround time for Starship's third launch from seven months to just four months. From this, we can see that with each mistake, SpaceX implements improvements, which undoubtedly lead to great progress compared to past occurrences. Therefore, the damages and challenges following each test launch should not come as a surprise with the goal of ensuring rapid turnaround capability for launching Starship rockets, improving the launch pad and launch tower is crucial. This will be the best way for Elon Musk to realize his ambitious goal of colonizing Mars with hundreds of launches per year and thousands of people traveling to the Red Planet. In broader terms, regarding the outcome of Starship's third test flight, it's not a loss. In a methodology unique in spaceflight, SpaceX is conducting a test flight campaign that does not spare its rockets. Other space companies and NASA's build one-off flight hardware to perfection before each testing in the real world. Not so with SpaceX, which launches born-to-die prototypes. Each of these test flights continue to be just that, a test, SpaceX said in a pre-launch statement, hedging against mishap. They aren't occurring in a lab or on a test stand, but are putting flight hardware in a flight environment to maximize learning. Therefore, this flight paves the way for many more launches, and SpaceX's Starship campaign is accelerating. Starship's fourth flight is likely to occur within the shortest time frame yet, given the significant milestones achieved. Immediately after the third Starship launch, the government entity FAA took new actions regarding the investigation, indicating that their investigative work had likely commenced. A mishap occurred during the SpaceX Starship OFT-3 mission that launched from Boca Chica, Texas on March 14th. The mishap involved both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship vehicle. The FAA will oversee the SpaceX-led mishap investigation. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.